Hello, I hope everyone can hear me now. <laughs> How's everyone doing? How are you tonight? We're going to see some games of Emmanuel Lasker today. Um, I actually found a lot of uh, nice games. Uh, so I think uh, I'm going to have to do another stream about Emmanuel Lasker uh, very soon. Let me just check that everything's right here. And make sure that... I'm not doing anything wrong again. <laughs> but uh, how are you guys? How are you doing? While well, I check everything here. Let me see that I mute myself. Okay. Yeah, everything seems to be working fine. Let me know if there are any problems at all. So, let's see. Well, so as I was saying, I found uh, a lot of nice games, a lot of instructive games, um, a lot of uh, positional chess, a lot of uh, games about initiative, uh, where he plays very active. Uh, and then I found a lot of uh, tactics and some uh, very interesting uh, ideas for, well, for grabbing the initiative um, more than anything even if the sacrifices are not entirely winning. And that's what I have prepared for today. I have a, a lot of positions prepared and a couple of games, of full games. I hope we can see them all. Um, but uh, whatever we don't see, I will uh, show next time. So, here um, we're going to start with this position where Lasker plays with uh, the black pieces. What would you play here? Just uh, if you want to take some time to think, just uh, curious about your ideas in this position, because it doesn't seem like uh, anything is happening. And um, there are a lot of ways uh, to play this this position. Just checking some of my settings here. So what do we do here with black? No, how would you play this? We have a position with the asserted pawn. Black's pieces are obviously on uh, the right squares. But um, yeah, how how to do this? How do we want to play here with black? What would be what would be let's say your move? in this position. I think a, a normal move can be played here. And uh, for example, Queen E7. This is like a, a move that makes a lot of sense here. To prepare maybe uh, Rook D8, this one Rook A to D8, and uh, create some some threats on the king side. But like I said, I found a lot of uh, games where Lasker goes for the kill, <laughs> and Miguel also goes for the kill. Hi, how are you? Como estas, Miguel? So he goes for Knight F2. But do you have a a winning line after Knight F2? Looks very interesting, no? But it's it's also quite uh, complicated. Knight takes c3. Okay, I don't know about knight takes c3 because um, what if uh, white takes with uh, the pawn there? So we don't have d4. I'm guessing that the idea is uh, is to play d4. Hi, chess scholar. Thank you. How are you? So I'm not so sure about knight takes c3. I would take with a b pawn here on c3. Probably still a very good position, but okay. The idea is to play ninety five, maybe ninety five and ninety uh, four, something like that. It's probably another way of playing this. And here I want bishop e two. 
And what do we do now? 95 is coming. I see four, I guess, is a is an idea for black. And then maybe we want to play b5. Okay, I, I usually like the knight on e4. That's why I wasn't so convinced about knight c3. Because the knight on e4 uh, prepares knight f2, like Miguel is suggesting. So I think that you could prepare. You don't need to give up this knight on e4 right now. I mean, you can probably take on c3 later after you're better prepared for it. But this knight f2 that he plays is, is very interesting. But not winning, like I said. Knight f2, uh, very interesting, but not winning. So rook f2. And what do we do now? We will take on e3, right? But what do we take on e3 with? And the answer is that you can take with any piece on e3. You can probably take with the bishop. And then there will be some similar ideas like in the game, because once you take on e3, this rook is pinned, and you can take on f3 at some point. And the king opens if white has to take with the g-pawn. But rook takes e3 is also very interesting. Because um, even if we ha don't have the bishop on e3, so the diagonal is closed for now, the rook uh, won't move from f2. There are a lot of threats. And I think uh, one of them, one constant threat that uh, black has here is rook takes d3. Of course, uh, taking on f3 is also there. And... Probably black has uh, a lot of compensation for the piece. And I was trying to find a way for white to play here. Because in the game, knight f5 was played and this move loses um, very fast. And I wasn't sure how to how to play here with white. Or what, what if you have this position in a game? How would you play? The first instinct would be to get out of the pin. Um, with the bishop on a7, I mean. But, you know, whenever you play king h1, this is going to happen, and then bishop takes f2. So, that's not possible. Probably moving the bishop from d3 is another option, something like bishop b1. And here, I think that black has a lot of options. Like a lot of options. There's this interesting idea with h5 and trying to play for h4 and at the right time take on f3. And another idea that black has here is queen b6, which is threatening to move the rook from e3. For example, rook takes f3 and then take on f2. So this is quite a big threat that white has to defend right now. And this is a, a fun line here that I looked at, queen c2, queen h7 is now a threat, so we have to take a moment to defend against this. Rook f1, and we can still take on f3, right? Takes rook f3, the rook on f2 is pinned, and we're actually threatening to take on f2 uh, at this point. We're going to take uh, as many times as we need to after king g2. So, I believe that white has to defend. Knight h1 is one of the moves. There's also bishop e1 here. I haven't looked at that. But now that I think about it, can I also play knight d4 on bishop e1? Probably on bishop e1, knight d4 looks good. What do you think? Can we do this? Can we still do this or not? Or, yeah, I think so. Maybe it doesn't make that much sense because with the knight on h1, knight d4 was always threatening knight e2. Now that I think about it, and right now knight d2 won't be a threat. So maybe I have something better here. Rook e8 is an idea. I want to take on e1. Unless you guys have a better idea. 
this looks very interesting here. Still double edge, no? There's a lot to calculate here because there's king g2 now, threatening my rook on f3. So I won't have time to take on e1. Okay, maybe I'm not, not this. Hi, Kevin. Oh, welcome. <laughs> First stream you have visited. Uh, hope uh, it won't disappoint. <laughs> so, okay, what do we play on bishop e1? Do we just move the queen out of b6? To take that rook on f2? Is that... Is that it? Queen... Queen b5... Something like that, maybe. I'm not sure what my queen is doing on b5, no? Maybe I want it back on g5 now. Maybe queen d8. And try to get back on the king's side. But there were some interesting lines here on knight e4, why not? I don't know, because I don't see what happens after the queen moves away. What do I play here? Do I just take on f2? But bishop takes f2, no? Oh, maybe this. Maybe this. Take on f2 and take on b2. Or rook e8 now. Okay, we can try rook e8 now. And king g2 should still be... I'll move after rook e8. King g2. And what do I do there? Same idea of taking on f2 and on b2. But I, I wanted something more out of this. Just not... Trying not to trade so many pieces. Well, it's not that many. It's just the rooks. <laughs> so we take on f2 and take on b2. Or do we play rook e8? Yeah, maybe something like this. And queen b2. Not sure if this is enough now. It's how many pawns? Okay, it's four pawns now. Maybe it's enough. <laughs> four pawns. But the pawn on d5, I'll probably lose it. So then bishop e1 seems like a better defense. Because on knight d4, I'm going to show you the line that I looked at. So I looked at knight h1, and here uh, knight d4 seems very nice. With the following idea, that if bishop takes d4, obviously I want to take with the queen, and then I have this idea of passing the queen on g4. Which would be great. If white doesn't take... Here he can go queen d2, which is a big mistake. And the next move is very nice, so you might want to, to give it a try. I think it's very photogenic. What happens next? What does black play here? Very nice, uh, very nice move. Not difficult to find, but it, it's just uh, nice to see all the motives coming together. That's our move here with black. What do we play with black? Black to play and win. Like right away. <laughs> Rook 
rook g3. Uh, okay. Is it enough? You can tell me in Spanish, Miguel. <laughs> you know I understand. So you can just... Uh, or if you want to practice English, that's also fine. Is rook g3 enough? Okay, so if I take with a knight, you want knight f3, right? And how many pieces are there? That's the only question. Rook g3, knight takes, knight f3, I move my king away. Knight d2, rook d2, and that's rook and two minor pieces, yeah? It's probably too many pieces. I think you can improve on that line. Because you found the idea, but you have a better move than rook g3. <laughs> okay, so practice your English then. Practice your English with the next move. Rook c3. Yeah? We take the bishop. Bennett, okay, rook g3, let's see this position because I'm thinking knight f3, knight, okay, king uh, here, knight d2, rook takes. And this position, unclear, I, I guess. I would say unclear. I'm not so sure uh, you can win this with black. At least, uh, <laughs> definitely not easily. Not sure if you can win it at all. Okay. Have a lot of the, the king on g2 is very open, but not easy. And you also said rook f2. And what about rook f2? Okay, that's a good question. What about rook f2? Oh, if rook f2, I can take with a queen, yes? On f2. And the question is, yeah, you, you play knight e2, I play king g2. So I'm out of the pain. You don't have any good mm, moves with the queen. So there's no check, no. Queen f2, I have knight f2. <laughs> Suddenly the knight comes to life. It's not such a horrible piece after all. But rook takes c3. What about this one? Okay, if queen c3, you have knight e2. And if pawn takes... We have the same situation as before where knight f3 works. So you win the queen. And now it's only uh, a minor piece and a rook for the queen. And the question is what if the king moves? I think if the king moves this is uh, too much advantage. Just get the queen, the, the rook back. Rook c8, rook... Oh, rook c8, no. Rook c7. I need to defend f7. Just uh, a lot of advantage. So queen d2 would be a mistake here because it sets up for all these double attacks. So white has only move here queen d1. And here, okay, black needs, still needs to find a lot of things, but it's queen e6 is a very nice idea, you have to admit. And what's the point? If bishop takes d4, you go this check here. And you take on d4 with a winning position. Queen e2, and here we take on f2, rook f2, just to allow white to take on g4 if he wants. We have rook f4. Set this idea up. And if rook f2, okay, something like this, queen g5. Don't trade queens, the king is still open. And we have uh, three pawns and rook for two pieces. Again, should be a big advantage. Uh, and this was bishop b1. This was all about bishop b1, which is one of the moves that white can try here. In the game, knight f5 was played, and this move loses uh, quickly after rook f3. It's not the only move, by the way, here. I think bishop f3 is just as good, but rook f3. And bishop takes f5, and here, after bishop takes f5, he has queen g5, 
winning another minor piece and h5 with the bishop again hi pumpkin the cat yes i'm trying to get back into streaming i don't uh, <laughs> i don't have a lot of time but i'm trying to find more so i won't promise anything but i'm trying to stream at least once a week So what did he play? He played queen d2 and bishop e3. And here white resigned. This was convincing enough. <laughs> nice one. Yes, knight f2 going for this crazy position here after rook e3 where uh, black has the initiative and white has to be uh, very careful in the defense. So let's see this position with black to play. Okay. This is a position where uh, black is winning probably anyway, like you have a lot of ways of playing here. But try to find the most direct win because it's very it's very nice. You're going to enjoy this tactic, this little tactic that um, uh, Lasker found here. So it's black to play and find the most direct way to win. I'm going to be uh, back on Friday, by the way. I'm going to be co-commentating with uh, uh, Arthur Snake Sons on the FIDE Grand Prix, the Berlin leg. And I'm going to switch roles with Ellen. She's going to commentate on Saturday, I'm back on Sunday and, and so on. Just check the schedule. So I'm going to be streaming more, just not on my channel. <laughs> So what do we play here? It's not the official FIDE commentary. Um, it's the Chess24 commentary. I I think there are two different things. I think there are other people doing the FIDE commentary. <laughs> I always look at checks, captures and threats. Nice. Yeah, that's the way to go, right? So that means you found it. Bishop takes f4 and hold on a second. So bishop takes f4 and if bishop takes f4, uh, yeah, knight f4, you just take the rook. But what if um, g takes f4, no? The most critical line, g takes f4, what happens there? Because if knight f takes f4 there, bishop takes f4 and I'm getting two pieces with white. Probably, probably it might still be very good for black, but, but keep looking. No? Bishop f4, pawn takes, what do you play? Zhivango, welcome, thanks for the follow. What do we play here with black? After bishop f4, pawn takes. What's our move? Because you did find the first move. The most direct win is bishop f4. I'm just going to give you another couple sessions, <laughs> couple of minutes. <laughs> just another couple of minutes to think about what you play before playing bishop f4. Rook c1, nice. You have to take first on c1. Bishop f4. And if g takes f4, you play rook c1. Rook c1 and knight f4. There you go. And you get the rook on d3. And the end game is winning. You have how many pawns is that? Okay, only two pawns. I thought there were three. But it should be enough to win, right? <laughs> Everybody can win this, hopefully. Uh, this should be a private se <laughs> session. It's free coaching, actually. Well, I, I used to do this with uh, Sophie, with my student. And I enjoyed it a lot, so I th uh, since I enjoy this a lot and I learn a lot from seeing uh, the World Champions games, I thought, why not do it again uh, for you guys? 
Okay, let's see one more. What about here? Okay, yes, this one. Here, white has a big advantage as well. Um, he has a lot of space and you probably have more than one good move. Very direct is e5 here. No? Very direct is e5, which happened in the game. Knight to d5 and here and here. What do we play here after knight d5? Let me ask you. Because I thought it was obvious, but now I realize. That, uh, that there are different ideas here. So what do we do here with, uh, with white? What's our next move? The bishop on e3 is hanging. So careful with that as well. Crick gift looks tempting, no knight bishop f h7, but does it work? So bishop h7, king takes knight g5, king g8, queen h5, and here how is knight? Oh, knight g6. I'm hanging a knight on d5. Bishop h7. What if I don't take? The Crick gift looks very tempting. I have to admit. King takes knight g5. What about king to g6? After knight g5. Because on f5, I'm thinking I can take it. And to any checks on d3 or c2, I can cover with bishop f5. So maybe not so clear. Bishop f5, king g8, queen h5, ah, bishop f5, but isn't there a mate on f7? There's a mate on f, oh, it's not mate, that's what you're saying, that king h8. But with king h8, I take on d5, so we're looking at this line, yes? King h7, knight g5, here I'm saying that king g6, I don't see the follow-up. But we were looking at king g8 in the first place, and here queen h5. And here I thought this was losing, and Miguel suggesting bishop f5. And here I think that this is winning, king h8. I don't know about the mate, but I can at least take my piece back, or so I think. Yeah, knight d5. Am I not taking my piece back here with knight d5? Bishop g6. I have queen e6. So yeah, I have queen e6 here. I'm not losing my queen. So this this doesn't work. I mean, bishop f5 doesn't work and king g8 doesn't work. But what about king g6? No. I don't have queen g4. I don't have the usual checks over here. I don't think this works very well. No, he didn't go for bishop h7, but um, yeah, you have the idea, you just start with knight g5. Bishop e6 and bishop f5, is, is that, but is that a draw? <laughs> with a king on g6, looks like enough compensation, maybe, but... Um, you know, it's a piece down if, if you don't finish the attack. And here you have knight g5, which is, uh, which is much better. So we're talking about this position, bishop g6, queen here. Oh no, but this is not going to be a draw because on bishop f5, I was planning to go knight f7. I'm not going to take the draw here. And take on d8. depends on where you go here because if you go to g8 I might 
think about taking on e7 or i don't know look at the double checks so no this is completely winning for white it is not a draw it's just king g6 which looks uh, which worries me i'm not sure that uh, <laughs> if you don't see the follow-up here you played in a game it's fun to analyze it now but in a game you probably don't go for it so here let's go back here because knight g5 is uh, not sacrificing well sacrificing the bishop on e3 but this is actually clearer bishop h7 now king f8 and queen h5 yeah and i believe that right now it's going to be over so i want to mate on f7 now for real and if bishop e6 I have a five, right? Do I have a five? Yeah, I do have a five because I can take um, many times on f five. Knight f five, yeah, take as many times as I want on f five. Knight f five, I'm going to take the knight as well. The bishop can never take because of queen f seven. H four in the in the position after king g six, yeah. Maybe. But still doesn't look like... Let me just see. I thought that... So h4 just going back and forth here. But uh, this position, you guys are analyzing this h4. Yeah, and what if I keep taking pieces here? <laughs> just to see what happens. h5. And I hide here behind this pawn. Oh, you have knight f7. No, but okay. That, wait, the queen is hanging. So I can do this. King h7. And the queen on d1 is also hanging. But queen g4 is not possible. I have a bishop on c8 here. That's the what I find a bit annoying after king g6. You're on king g6, queen g4, we don't have it. h4 is typical, yeah. h4 is typical. The problem is that the <laughs> this bishop is hanging. And then the queen is hanging. So I can actually go king h6. Okay, there's a check, yes. But bishop f5, very annoying uh, defense here. So always my queen is hanging there. Queen e3, and now I can finally move my queen. Queen b7. I think now black is very safe. There's a check on g5, but I'm thinking king g8. And then that's where the checks uh, end. And the threats end with it. No, there's still e6. Okay. But queen c6. Queen c6, and now it's really over, no? <laughs> like, really 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 over I have no more pieces to to bring yeah this is quite a line <laughs> that uh, that I didn't have here but we discovered it together now so let's go back to our game because knight g5 is winning so knight e3 doesn't work because of bishop h7 what we were seeing before and he goes h6 and this is an important position so this was where I was going to stop and ask you, how do we continue here? Because if we just went to g5 to come back home, <laughs> then it makes no sense. Besides the bishop on e3 is hanging. Yeah, h6. So what do we play on h6? What's this about? What is white planning to do here? Queen h5. Queen h5. We want to go queen h5. Yeah, something with queen h5. But does it work right away? Um, 
Let's see if it works right away. So if g6, we want to take on h6, and that's made on h7 and f7. So queen h5, g6 doesn't work. If I take on e3, I'm obviously getting mated. So how do I defend against queen h5? How do I defend there? Okay, I'll just take the knight on g5, yeah? Take on g5, queen h7, king f8, and that's not mate. Queen h8, knight g8. This is what I'm thinking. Queen h5, I'm thinking that if I take on g5... Oh, it is a mate, because I, I looked at queen h7, but what about bishop h7? And queen h7, I'm th I was thinking that this is not mate. Right. Oh, the knight on d5 is hanging. Nobody's saying anything. <laughs> the knight on d5 is hanging, so this is not working. This is not working. Okay, not working. Let me go back here. So let's think again then. Queen h5. Okay, queen h5, knight e3, I'm not getting mated. Queen h5, knight e3, I was afraid of bishop h7, but there I'm going to go to h8, knight f7, king h7, knight d8, rook d8, and do the math in the end, I have three pieces for the queen. I think queen h5, let's see it now, knight e3, bishop check, here, you take this one, I take here. And if you want to take the queen, I have too many pieces. It's three pieces for the queen. Three pieces for the queen, not what we want. But it's good that we saw this line because we learned something from it. So on queen h5, we learned that the problem is that on bishop h7, no, this is the problem, bishop h7, king h8, and black has too many pieces. So, if this is the problem, we're going to fix the problem. We start with bishop h7, we need the king to go to f8. And now the king has to go to f8. Because on king h8, it's not the same. We take on f7, king h7, and here, and here we can take on d8. First of all, because on knight e3 we have uh, queen d3. So we're saving some pieces here. Queen f5, uh, knight f5, we have g4. Yeah, we do have g4. And uh, does queen f7 work there? Oh! You mean here, queen h5, knight e3, queen f7. Uh, yeah, I thought on queen f7 I play king h8. And I didn't see anything else, so I just stopped there. The problem is that we don't have queen g6 and queen f5, which are the moves that we would like to play. Okay, since we saw this line, we can also get the idea of playing knight d5 first. Oh, since you mentioned this. This is something that I looked at, because now if knight e3, it works. King f h8 and queen g6. And now it, it is going to be made on h7. But, um... <laughs> smother made. It, it's not really smother made, no, because we don't have king g8. But, uh... It's still made. Queen g8, uh, black and take with a king. Here. But here rook f8 is annoying. And again black defends, because he can always go to h8, which is our real problem in these lines. So it's, it's very f interesting 
how he finds all the precise lines bishop h7 because earlier in the other two games he also finds the most precise moves very good calculation starts with bishop h7 and now he goes queen h5 and it's uh, it's over now because on pawn takes g5 he takes with the pawn and f7 is hanging the bishop e6 wait this can still be defended what do we play here Bishop h7 is very nice, yeah. <laughs> you don't appreciate it uh, unless you see all the lines, uh, which seem more tempting. Very precise move order. What's our move here? How do we finish this? We take on f7. <laughs> rook takes f7. Bishop takes and rook f1. And it's over. Nothing uh, black can do to defend f7. He plays knight f5. He has to give this back. And queen d7. And g6 now. So from now on I think it's fairly easy. Win the queen and well, black has two rooks, but the king on f8 and knight f6. Wait, 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 wait. Knight f6. I was going too fast. Oh, knight f6 here. Ah, nice. But rook f6. And queen h6 is made. Oh, that's nice. And queen h6 is made. Very nice. Thanks for pointing this out. I didn't have it here. That's very, very nice. <laughs> Just take everything here on the f5. So, yeah. The game uh, ended uh, like this. Rook f5. I guess on knight f6 now okay on knight f6 now we we cannot take anymore with the rook because qu queen takes no but now we can move the queen most likely we already won a knight just move away maybe f3 just to be piling up on the f file yeah queen f3 looks good So queen d7 and g6. Yeah. I was very impressed with the, this uh, attacking games that I found as well. It's queen h5 and queen h8. Okay. Just a spite check here, king f1, and that's and that's it. Okay, the following game is very famous, so I thought. We, I have to include this one. So we have the bird opening. <coughs> the opening is not so important. I'm just going to go over it uh, fast. Knight c3. Castles. And here he goes knight e2 with the idea of uh, playing knight g3 next. Which is what actually happens in the game. Queen c7. Here he plays knight e5. Takes with the bishop. Queen e2. And this is okay. <laughs> so it is famous, yes. But I don't know, maybe not, not everybody knows it. Lasker Bauer is the... 
is the beginnings of this uh, very famous idea. So do you know, I mean, obviously Kevin knows the move here, but if uh, anybody doesn't know here, try to find White's next move. A6 is a mistake, I forgot to mention. And um, <laughs> it might sound crazy, but black is losing after this move. I'll show you after you find the uh, uh, white idea what what he should have played. The year is eighteen eighty nine. Very close. Yeah, yes. Uh, if you're a new chess player, you have to know the classics. And this is a classic. <laughs> I mean, this is a game that uh, probably started this whole idea. I don't know if... Uh, I'm actually going to look for that. See if there are any previous games with the same idea that he plays here. But it must be one of the first. So what's your move here with white? Bishop h7, knight h7, queen g4, but it doesn't work. Yes, it doesn't work because of knight h7, no? Okay, so get rid of the of the piece. <laughs> if the knight is the piece that's defending the king, this is a, this is a typical idea. You don't uh, you don't let that knight survive. To see how you get rid of it. Okay, bishop takes f6 is the obvious way of getting rid of the knight. And what's another option besides bishop takes f6? Because if you give up that bishop and bring a bishop instead of the knight, I'm not sure it's going to work anyway, no? And the other one is knight h5. And knight h5 is the move he played. But okay, knight takes h5. So what's uh, what's the idea here? What do we play now with white? Why is this uh, so winning? <laughs> now bishop takes h7. Yes, now bishop takes h7. You don't take on h5. Because if you take on h5, then black has time to defend. And this is... The pretty thing about this game. Then black plays f5 and if rook f3 then queen e8 and he's just in time to get your queen out of there. So you either trade queens or you play queen h3 but I'm not sure that queen h3 is a move that you want to play with d4 coming next. So well, bishop f6 will be there also. So this is not uh, what white wants. What white wants is bishop takes h7. King takes, queen takes h5, right, and king g8. So, what do we do now? We gave up one piece. How do we win the game, though? Let me get some water here. Yes, the double bishop sacrifice, bishop g7. King g7 and queen g4. And then rook f3. The way to do things after you sacrifice the second bishop. And this is just winning. Rook h3, black has to give up the queen. 
and he won't have enough material because queen d7 is coming next. <laughs> Bishop f6 and takes here. If, he, if black takes on f4, we have rook f1. So this is not... This is not a problem. Nothing happens here. He played king g7 and rook f1. Rook b8. And here I was wondering why doesn't he take this pawn on d5. The answer is nothing happens, but he probably doesn't like giving up... Uh, giving any counterplay. I'm not sure if there's a lot of counterplay, but he just doesn't want this. He doesn't want a rook on d2 and he prefers to go for queen d7 with the idea of queen g4 and why not repeat <laughs> the same maneuver with rook f3 and rook h3. Yes, you have to check first with the queen after you sacrifice the, the two bishops because you have to have the king on the h5. That's the typical way of doing uh, things after you sacrifice the, the second bishop. Because if you play rook f3, then you give black the chance to to defend. I can just go back for a moment and double check. But I think that if you go rook f3 here, uh, black can play rook h8. And this is usually a problem. And I'm sure that I have seen a game like this. And on rook g3, bishop g5... I'm pretty sure that I have to remember and see my, my files about the sacrifice, uh, but I'm sure that I've seen a game like this before, where black plays bishop g5 and, uh, and he's not losing anymore, because now king f6. If you don't play bishop g5, then here uh, he's getting mated on g5. So bishop g5 is the defense, and when rook takes, I go to f6. And if queen takes, then I go to f8. And there's no mate. The king runs away. It's very easy to throw it away, yeah. <laughs> As usual, winning positions are easy to throw away. Yeah, that's the, the pattern, yeah, to check first. Uh, usually, that's usually the pattern. But you always have to see your own uh, position. And here you go like this. Uh, so we were in this position after takes here and rook f1. Yeah, he goes queen d7 here, just uh, going after g4 again. Plays rook d8 to make some space for the king. Queen g4 and the king has to go to f8. Takes on e5 and here this is very pretty. If bishop e5 we have this move, <laughs> queen e6, double attack. Uh, f7 and e5, and f6 is obviously bad because of queen e5. So he plays bishop g7, and now e6. Rook b7 and queen g6. f6, and you have many moves to win here, but rook f6 is the most convincing. The rook on d8 is hanging, so he goes king e8, check, check, and take the other rook. So now he's got three pawns, another one falling here on the queen side. Goes pawn takes d4, yeah, and here queen d3 just to <laughs> mess with your opponent. <laughs> Dare him to take your queen. Alright, so this one here. Okay, so this one here, I actually chose because he used the same pattern in two of his games. And um, I will start with this one, although the one that I'm going to show next was the first one played where the pattern works uh, very well. Um, so in this position, Lasker is white and he plays bishop takes h7. He liked this sacrifice and he used it a lot in, uh, in his games. Yes, I do have chess base and I can... Uh, search for similar patterns. You can just search for a position, for example, you put a bishop on h7 and king on g8 and try to find similar positions and see, which is what I did and found these games, uh, where he sacrifices on h7. 
but bishop h7 here doesn't work uh, again i think the defense is not obvious i will show you the defense but the right way to do things would have been with g5 so first g5 and then bishop h7 is coming next um, and if black wants to defend he can try with g6 but that only creates uh, more weaknesses h6 f6 this cannot be taken because of knight h6 and well here you can bring even another piece because it's not clear how black can find the counterplay and if knight h5 trying to stop things on the h file you always have a five so yeah this would have been the the right way to do things but last year he plays uh, bishop takes h7 knight takes and here he has to play g5 because the queen on h4 was hanging but since he gives uh, black some time black can now defend and the only move well there are two moves who def that defend but the move that keeps the advantage is g6 the idea is that now after rook h3 which is his plan he can play f6 and defend this knight on h7 but he has to be very precise because if he plays f5 then knight g6 and white is still winning if rook g7 for example rook g7 is not threatening anything he plays knight f3 There's no rook g6 because of queen takes h7. So f6 had, has to be played. Now knight takes g5. And this is the point that here black can take on g5. And yeah, if we take on g5, queen g5 trades queens. We don't want that ever. <laughs> Usually when we sacrifice pieces. And if queen g4 then he has time to to bring more pieces on the king side for example knight g7 not the only move i think rook f7 rook g7 was also an option here but the game went like this after g5 knight takes g5 which uh, is a mistake because he gives up the piece he was probably just afraid of rook h3 and couldn't find a way of defending yeah, so Golov said count number of pieces attacking against pieces defending, and if numerical superiority, then you look for a winning attack. But Kasparov also says that, yeah. I knew this from Kasparov. Uh, I remember his interview from the World uh, Championship where he beat uh, Karpov in Lyon with, a very nice, uh, with some very nice tactics. And that's what he says. He's just showing, look at the pieces and let's count them. <laughs> I have more pieces attacking. This has to work. So this is how the game ended. Knight g5 uh, mistake. And here, okay, I'm, I'm, white is not even down material. And rook h3 is going to happen next. Uh, important to play bishop a3. Because if you cover on e7 there's a mate on h8 and if rook c5 then c takes d4 yeah here he's threatening mate but it's not going to happen queen e4 and black resigned <laughs> reading too many books is never too many books <laughs> okay so this happened in this game as well it's exactly the same uh, pattern white takes on b7 which is a big mistake okay he's uh, under a lot of pressure but queen h queen b7 just make uh, makes things worse and he takes on h2 knight h2 and there you go here we have it again <laughs> exactly the same thing that he was trying to achieve in the previous game if queen c7 defending the knight then knight g4 because the knight's pinned I have rook h1 mate. Uh, f3 played and okay, now it's it's over. Check, king f2, check. He plays queen g3 and after queen g3 he takes and takes on, e, uh, on e3 here. And this is an extra piece. But 
this is a fun uh, line here if king e2 okay now i'm seeing that the line that i have is completely unnecessary because here you can take on d1 and play e d4 which is much way easier I just take the bishop on e3 so my pretty line is completely unnecessary but i'm just going to show it anyway because it's it's very nice knight g4 and uh, the point is that if rook takes h1 you have queen f2 and rook e3 and mate on d2 and then if pawn takes g4 you can take on g4 and if the king goes to f2 then the rook's lost on d1 and if the king goes to d2 then you can take on g2 with a similar line uh, to the one that we just saw with a similar mate actually and queen e4 <laughs> which is very nice this mate on on d4 so i thought it would be pretty to see uh, do you think gms calculate to the end or do you play uh, some moves and then go from there uh, i think not everything can be calculated and uh, from what i understood at least from this uh, interview of Kasparov that I saw, uh, he was in that line, in that particular line, he was uh, basing his uh, calculation on feeling a lot, on intuition. He was just uh, showing that he has too many pieces attacking and uh, his opponent has too few pieces defending and he's just taking defenders <laughs> and he will have uh, a lot of pieces attacking. I think they calculate a lot. They obviously calculate a lot. But I think they rely a lot of intu on intuition at, as well. Okay, and this one. Okay, I actually wanted to get to these ones because the other ones were pretty and there were some nice tactics. But here's where uh, the actual good stuff happens. So we have this game against Pillsbury where Lasker is black. Uh, he's uh, a little better here but uh, white plays uh, f5 and it's his turn so what does he do here he can play bishop d7 no it keeps the bishops and uh, the the advantage because here he'll probably be able to start something against the on the against the king on the queen side but the two bishops should also be very strong. But this is not what happened in the game. What do you think happened in the game <laughs> after f5? I'm also thinking that uh, about um, whether GMs calculate to the end that uh, at that level they've seen so many games and uh, they're able to to understand the position very well and realize if they have a long lasting advantage or or if it will work they've probably seen something similar before so they're making a lot of connections <laughs> just looking for some way to sack a bishop now <laughs> on a2 yeah no not gonna sacrifice the bishop on a2 now <laughs> it's done thematic sicilian type sacrifice yes thematic sicilian type sacrifice rook takes c3 yes this is what he played in the game and this is where the beauty begins so let's see a few ideas. Let's see what's a few lines. If I'm going to see this one last because this is the game, so we're going to see what happened. But what if he takes on c3? Well, if he takes on c3, we have a couple of ways of playing here. One of them is to just move the bishop away again and follow up with rook c8, just like in the Sicilian. You sacrifice sometimes the exchange just to um, 
make white's structure worse and then you're not winning immediately but you play rook c8 and there's a lot of pressure on c3 yes this is what happens here and white cannot really defend this well if king b2 then here we play bishop takes f5 and if queen takes f5 we have queen c3 you can see that queen f5 queen c3 and this will lead to mate queen e4 king a1 and here i have a choice right i have rook c1 or bishop d4 which one do i like more <laughs> let's try this one is faster and rook c1 so this is king b2 if white tries to defend the pawn on c3 with the king and if rook c1 this is again pretty, bishop d4. So what if c takes d4? We keep sacrificing pieces. And if queen takes f5, we have the same idea of queen b4. We have to draw the queen out of the third rank, because... Uh, why do we play bishop f5? Because if we play queen b4, white has this move, queen b3. And here, bishop f5... Um, bishop d3 to defend the rook on c1 he gives back some material but it's not made yet king a1 so that's why the correct way of starting this sacrifice um, is with bishop f5 here not after queen b4 in this position black should still be much better queen d4 with a very big advantage but it's just the other one is made so there's no need to go for this much better to be here and uh, checkmate next or win the queen king b1 bishop d3 now okay and the other way uh, would be with so we will look here at uh, bishop d7 and the other way would be with queen takes c3 this also works do i play blitz on stream 2 mm, i haven't I, I played sometimes on uh i played a while ago on chess 24 so i did some banter blitz mm, maybe i can do that in the future Queen f3 and bishop takes f5. This would be one idea. Bishop queen f5 and check here. And here you can go for this. Rook king b1 and here rook e8. Rook e8 is quite nice. With the idea of rook e1. many pawns again no bishop d3 i'm going to play g6 i have to oh right and i have the idea of no rook e6 and rook b6 this is what's going to happen next and here i think why needs to be careful because on queen f3 there's rook e3 right and i win the bishop so he has to go queen h3 if here now there's a check here on c8 so that's when I go rook e6. Mm, I'm not really a chess 24 people. <laughs> I'm just saying I did some banter blitz for them. I use a... Uh, both chess 24 and lee chess both for blitz and lee chess only for lessons <laughs> i was going to say both for blitz and lessons but not chess 24 for lessons okay so back to our game uh this uh this can work here so on rook takes c3 he played f takes e6 okay so what do we play now after f takes e6 What's our next move?
I don't like online play, leave it to youngsters. <laughs> I used to play a lot online, but then um, I stopped because it was uh, I was wasting too much time playing and uh, there are more important things to do, like studying, for example. <laughs> and that's the way you actually learn chess. So I can say that I don't play very much online. I sometimes do, just for fun, but I don't... Uh, I don't often play online. So what do we do here with black? Rook c8, rook fc8, okay, but um, rook fc8, and what happens on f7? Can I take, just have to see how, rook fc8, okay, let's see this, I don't uh, have it here, so what happens if I take on f7? I don't know uh, which way I, I take on f7. So if pawn takes king of fate, I'm guessing. My first idea was to take with a pawn and try to do something here with bishop d3. But pawn takes king of fate. And um, I can still do that, no? King of fate, I can still play bishop d3. I'm not going to take the rook <laughs> on c3. I'm trying to use the light squares. And the other idea is, what if I take with a queen and here king h8 has to be played and now bishop d3 must be stronger, no? Because I have the queen and the king where I need it. I want queen g6. And maybe I want e7 and e8. This looks very good for white now, I have to admit. Let me ask. Yeah, this is winning now for white. Completely winning for white. So I'm going to show you the move. <laughs> okay, well done, Miguel. Vamos. <laughs> On point with the tactics. Rook a3. How do you like this move? The thing is that if you come back with the rook, you lose uh, momentum, no? If you play rook c6 or something like that, you're still okay, but it's not nothing special here. White can take on f7 and this should be about equal. You have to... this was his idea. Rook a3. Uh, um, I, I, I don't think we looked at Lasker with Sophie. Maybe we, we see, we've seen something similar, but have we looked at Lasker now that I thought that we haven't? Where's Sophie? She says she would be, <laughs> she would join, she can tell me, but I will, uh, I will check. So what's the point? B takes a3, as you pointed out, queen b6 is winning. What happens here? If king a1, we want to take on d4, of course. If king c2... Yeah, so let's see this now, just to see it on the board. And if king c2, we want rook c8. Hi, team. Thank you for the follow. So we want rook c8. And here, king d2, and we take on d4. And this is going to be made. 
most likely bishop e2 okay here we can take a moment to take this pawn on e6 that's pretty annoying we don't want to lose because of that two extra pawns for black and uh no two extra pawns no it's a rook down but the thing is that uh, the threats keep coming it's not just taking the pawn it's also opening the f file yes so bishop c3 and rook f8 is a threat for example if queen f3 this loses the queen now no rook f8 will be two rooks for the queen but i don't think this rook on h1 counts for now bishop d4 is one idea and queen f2 so after queen b6 only defense is bishop b5 well it's not really a defense but it's the only way of uh, <laughs> that white is not getting mated right away pawn takes e6 and here if we go back to b6 black is preparing e5 and uh, he still has a lot of uh, compensation big attack probably much better still but let me show you the game because the game was pretty much similar if pawn takes f7 takes and here is where white took on a3 so we have the same line queen b6 uh, with the same moves if king c2 now we go rook c7 so let me show you a different line now we saw king e1 earlier let's see bishop d3 what do you play here black to play and finish the game off Bishop g5, okay, I think at this point uh, anything works, but you have a mate. I think at this point it's... Yeah, the... the <laughs> Bishop g5 should work, yeah, should work. Bishop g5. And you want rook e7. But the mate? What about mating here, right away? Made in two. Black to play and made in two. Queen B two. And is that made in two? Rook C two. <laughs> rook c2 and then queen b2 if king c2 you have rook b2 a uh, queen b2 sorry and if king e1 then queen f2 okay so bishop b5 played in the game white finds the only move here king a1 and here he plays rook c7 which is not the most precise but it, it makes a lot of sense you would want to bring the rook uh, into the attack the most precise way of playing is queen c4 uh, with the idea of taking on d4 and there's another cute idea here after queen g4 that you want to bring the rook but on the second rank so you would do this with rook e7 and rook e2 given that this uh, rook e1 doesn't work because we have a check here on c3 winning the rook or taking first on e1 and then uh, queen c3 or taking on e1 and taking on d4, I guess. We have multiple ideas here. Uh, and another nice way of bringing the rook, let me show you this, is bishop e5 because of the pin, and we play rook f2 next. And whenever he goes rook d2, we still have this check on c3. So queen c4 was very strong here, but he played rook c7, rook d2, defending c2, and here he plays rook c4, attacking d4, and white plays rook d1. Again, missing a chance, but, um, you know, <laughs> defending this position is not easy, so can you blame white? The best way would be with rook e1. This is a very precise way of actually getting a perpetual. Calculation, yes, calculation killing us all of us <laughs> so rookie one how do we get a draw here well first of all the point is that we don't have this 
because now if we take we're gonna get mated and queen f7 uh, which would like to avoid right so queen a5 is one idea here one very strong idea the rooks hanging and queen c3 might be coming but rook e8 king h7 and now this check g6 everything is still hanging if queen f6 this is going to end in mate rook c1 and queen c3 but rook e7 is the way to making a draw here nice ideas no for both sides king h8 check and now it's still a draw because you just play king e7 uh, queen e7 and queen e8 And what if bishop g7, you ask? Then we take it. <laughs> These lines, they hurt. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but they're fun to see, no? That's how you learn things. And then you see these things and suddenly you have a game and... Oh my god, I have this rookie 7 that I saw in Lasker's game. Let me make a draw like that. And here, queen d7. So the funny part is that you probably don't want to go to the F file because of a, a check on F2 and you might get mated. So you have to stay you have to stay here on G8 and then we make a draw again. A perpetual. But <laughs> you can obviously see that this is a very complicated line and uh, the defense from this position is not obvious at all. Uh, rookie one okay rookie one might be an idea that you you can find now i think people look for active ideas nowadays more than they used to um, in fact if you look at all games you'll see that the defense is not so precise now the defense is uh, is very precise in most games and people do look for active defense so rookie one is a move that i think people would consider now but you still have to see the rest <laughs> see the the whole uh, perpetual idea hi davo Welcome. So let's see the game. No? Rook d1. And here black has uh, queen c6, which is the best. Threatening again rook c1. And the point is that if king b1, we have bishop g5. And we're insisting on rook c1. But he plays rook c3, which is not the best again. A lot of mistakes happening here. Queen f5, queen c4, this was the plan. And here, king b2 is the final mistake that Lasker doesn't leave unpunished. He should have played king b1. <laughs> this king moves. Doesn't this happen a lot in, the, in your games? They give you a check and you have only one good move. And you always choose the wrong one. I know it's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to, to some of you. So here, king b1 is the right way. Of playing because um, on this check you have rook b2 and yeah here you still have uh, here you have to play queen c6 actually because you need to defend b7 <laughs> these are always the hardest puzzles I know and when you get them in the game it's a lot of fun so king b2 is a mistake but why is king b2 a mistake what do we play here with black What's our move? Black to play and win. Bishop d4. Try number one. Do I have do I have any other tries here? Bishop takes d4. Bishop takes pawn okay. Bishop takes d4 twice. So 
So what do I play on bishop d4? Okay, while you give me more uh, <laughs> more suggestions here, I'm going to try to figure out bishop takes d4. So what's the point? First of all, what happens if rook takes, no? Okay, what happens if rook takes on bishop take on rook takes d on bishop takes d4, sorry? You don't have rook c2 if that's what you're trying to get because my I have a queen on f5. No, no, you don't have rook c2. Oh, I knew this was the, the, what you wanted. Rook c2 I take with a queen. Yes, the queen is there. But Kevin found it. Rook a3. Again, rook a3. <laughs> Haven't we seen this before? <laughs> Rook a3 happens again. So the point is that if rook a3, we go queen c3, rook a4, and we go b5, and this leads to mate. Check, king a5, and mate on d8, which is very similar to the mate that happened in the game. Um, but white gave a check here. Queen e6, king h7, and now he decides to take the rook. Um, if he gives another check, Black has to repeat once. Well, actually, can he go um, king h8 here? What happens on king h8? This is a good question. So king a b1 happens here. Okay, this is very interesting now. King b1. And how is this different from having the king on g8? Because now I can take on d4 on king b1. Now I can take on d4 with the idea of taking on a2. And I guess the difference would be that white doesn't have this check on f8. Yes, that's a big difference because my rook on a3 is hanging. Yes, okay, now I see it. So I don't have the same thing here if I play king h8 because on king b1 I don't have this move. Queen f8 wins the rook. And that would be very painful. All right, nice. I have to go king g8 then. This is another nice discovery. And on queen e6, we can go king h8. When in, if king b1, I can again take, because on check, I have king h7, and there is no other good check. No, we don't, he doesn't have queen e4. And this would be, no, if rook d4, we want to take on a2, and here, and mate. This is what we're looking for with bishop takes d4. Okay, so going back here, yeah, king g8, and if queen e6, now we go to h8. This uh, is probably what he would have played to get rid of the checks. There's another check on e8, but that's it, right? King h7. And yeah, let me show you this line, because if king a3, queen c3, king a4, now we don't have b5 there's queen b5 but we have a6 and then b5 so it's going to be over next uh, white wind black wins more material so or win some material back and the game ended like this king h7 here king a3 and this is how things ended queen c4 there Bishop d8, queen b6, and he actually played all the way to mate. How uh, how thoughtful. <laughs> Bishop takes b6 mate. I had another game, but I will keep that for uh, next time. Because I really want to go and attend a very interesting class by Jakob Ogard. That will start in five minutes. So I'm going to go learn some chess now. <laughs> uh, and... Uh, and uh, the stream for now. I still have some very good games to show you, so I'm I will stay with Lasker for a little while, maybe one more stream. 
um, thank you very much for joining my uh, little uh, in uh, incursion here. No, Lasker was not known primarily as a ta tactician, as a tactician, but uh, that's why I thought it was very nice. Yeah, right. Champions are very good at everything. No, that's right. I also I didn't uh, have him as a tactician. I didn't know he had so many uh, active games, uh, tactics in his games. But uh, there you go. I was surprised to find all this. I actually found some very good strategic games, uh, some very nice ones, and uh, I can't wait to show you the, those ones as well. But yes, that's gonna be on a different stream. I don't know yet, I hope next week, because this week I'm already going to uh, have uh, some busy days. I'm going to be streaming together with Arthur's on Friday, uh, on... Um, the Fide Grand Prix and on Sunday on round three of the Fide Grand Prix and depending on my schedule next week I'm going to decide on a, on a day but I'm going to announce that on my Instagram and Facebook <laughs> not very active on Facebook but I'm going to try and uh, be more active there as well okay then that's it for me now. Thank you very much. This was a lot of fun uh, seeing these games and calculating a little bit. Uh, just a little training before seeing those uh, great games, I hope, on Friday. I hope we will have some good games, although it's round one. What do you think? Usually on round one, people are just playing it safe. We have some uh, some draws, but we'll see. We'll, we'll probably have the the full list of players sometime uh, these days. I saw there were some problems with some players uh, traveling, so we don't exactly know the the players. I think it will be fun. Yes, a lot of fighters. I also think uh, it will be a lot of fun probably we're going to probably have a fighting first round okay but i'm gonna go now because uh, the class is going to start and i don't want it to, don't want it to be late for this class uh, i think it's very interesting about how to analyze your own games i want to to see what uh, jacob has to, to say about that i'm sure he has some very good advice on that so thank you again very much I will see you on Friday on Chess24 for the uh, commentary of the Grand Prix and probably and on Sunday again for the Grand Prix and some at some time uh, next week with Lasker. Thank you. Bye. Have a good night for those um, living in Europe. Bye.